Hello everyone, welcome to Physics Online Classes for Class 12 students. Let us continue Chapter 6, Electromagnetic Induction. Today we are going to study about Lenz Law and Conservation of Energy. In the previous class, we studied Faraday's Law of Electromagnetic Induction. So what are the two Faraday's Laws? You can remember, the first Faraday's Law states that Whenever magnetic flux linked with the coil changes, induced EMF takes place and that induced EMF will present as long as changing magnetic flux takes place. That means when magnetic flux linked with that closed circuit changes, then only induced EMF takes place and that induced EMF exists in that coil until magnetic field changes. If magnetic field remains constant, then there is no induced EMF. Then the second law states that the magnitude of induced EMF is equal to the rate of change of magnetic flux linked with the circuit. So whatever the amount of induced EMF takes place in that circuit and that quantity of induced EMF is always equal to rate of change of magnetic flux because induced EMF is completely depending on changing magnetic flux right and it is given by the equation E equal to d pi divided by dt E indicates induced EMF d pi by dt indicates rate of change of magnetic flux remember when we studied second law there in the equation we are using negative sign E equal to minus d pi by dt. So why we have to write negative sign in that equation that question arises in our previous class. So answer for that negative sign that will be explained by Lenz law. Is it clear? So Lenz law that gives polarity of induced EMF means in which direction induced EMF takes place that is explained by Lenz law and about Lenz law as well as conservation of energy we are going to study in today's session. Yes, let us study about Lenz law and conservation of energy. First you have to observe this setup. Before going to study about the Lenz law just I will explain you the experiment so it will be easy to understand the Lenz law here we considered a coil and this coil is connected to galvanometer galvanometer shows deflection whenever the current is produced and here we kept a bar magnet which is very close to the coil we considered coil and bar magnet just like uh, Faraday's first experiment coil and magnet experiment you can remember the same setup we considered now, when that bar magnet, north pole of the bar magnet, when it is moving towards the coil, magnetic field changes. When magnetic field changes, induced EMF takes place in the coil. Means, current is produced in the coil. Now, that current is moving in anti-clockwise direction. How that induced EMF is moving? This is moving in anti-clockwise direction. Observe the directions here. This induced EMF is moving through the coil in the anti-clockwise direction. Only when north pole of the magnet is moving towards the coil, induced EMF takes place so that it is moving in anti-clockwise direction. Remember, whenever the current is moving in anti-clockwise direction, then it will generate a north pole. That means this coil will acting as the north pole of the magnet because whatever the current is produced in the coil, that current is also surrounded by magnetic field. So this coil is acting as north pole because current is moving in anti-clockwise direction. Why the current is moving in anti-clockwise direction? Because north pole of the magnet is moving towards the coil. Magnetic field changes. So induced EMF is moving in anti-clockwise direction. Anyhow, remember the point. First point, the north pole of the bar magnet is moving towards coil. Second point, 
magnetic field surrounded by the magnet linked with the coil changes. Third point, induced EMF takes place in the coil and it is moving in anti-clockwise direction. Fourth point, because of its direction, because of anti-clockwise direction, that coil generates north pole. Is it clear? Now here, this is north pole of the magnet and the coil is also north pole. It generates north pole. Now observe carefully, north pole of the magnet and north pole of the coil because coil now it is acting as the north pole. North pole of the coil, north pole of the magnet, both are having same poles whether there is a force of attraction or repulsion. Remember, when both are same poles, we already know that there is always a force of repulsion instead of attraction. That means, when this magnet is moving towards the coil, there always a force of repulsion occurs. Is it clear? Similarly, you can observe this diagram. Now I am going to take same setup, coil is connected to galvanometer and we considered a magnet. Now what I am doing, I am going to take that bar magnet away from the coil. Means this north pole of the magnet, it is moving away from the coil. When magnet is moving away from the coil, anyhow magnetic field changes, induced EMF takes place in the coil and that induced current is moving in the clockwise direction because this magnet is moving away from the coil. It is exactly moving in the opposite direction. That's why induced current is also moving in the clockwise direction. Now, when the current is moving in a clockwise direction, it will generate south pole. So, here the current is moving like this. It generates south pole of the coil. Two cases you have to remember. In the first case, north pole of the magnet is moving towards the coil. Induced EMF is moving in anti-clockwise direction. So, it generates north pole to the coil. Second case, when the same magnet is moving away from the coil, again induced EMF takes place but it is moving in clockwise direction so that it generates a south pole of the coil. So these two points you have to remember. Now again come to the first case. Now here both are having same pole. North pole of the magnet, north pole of the coil, there is a force of repulsion that indicates this coil opposes movement of the magnet. What happens here? Because of force of repulsion, here there will be force of repulsion. Because of this force of repulsion, so this coil will oppose movement of the magnet because both are having same pole. There is a force of repulsion. It opposes movement of the magnet. In the second case, what happens? Here, the magnet is moving away from the coil and it produces current in the clockwise direction. It generates a south pole. So, here it is again opposing the movement of the magnet because north pole of the magnet, south pole of the magnet means here there will be force of attraction. So, force of attraction is there here. That's why it will oppose or it refuses the movement of the magnet. So, here we are moving a magnet towards the coil. But coil opposes because there is a force of repulsion. In the second case, we are moving magnet away from the coil. But there is a force of attraction, again it opposes. Anyhow, the conclusion is, whatever the induced EMF takes place in the coil, this induced EMF opposes movement of the magnet. It opposes changing magnetic field. I will give you one small example to understand this concept. Uh, a student is admitted to one reputed college. Who is the reason for his admission? His parents. Right. Then he admitted to college. After admitted to the college, he started to oppose his parents. Initially, they are the reason for his admission. After admission, he started to oppose the parents. 
here induced emf takes place only because of the movement of the magnet after inducing so this induced emf opposes don't move or the movement of the magnet it is opposing this is very interesting but it's all because of the poles and its direction is it clear so that's why here you can see the statement of lenz law it states that the polarity of induced emf polarity means what direction the polarity of induced emf is such that it tends to produce current which opposes changing magnetic flux that produced it or it can also states that the direction of induced emf is such that it opposes the cause of emf who is the cause of emf changing magnetic flux right the direction of induced emf is such that it opposes the cause of emf who is the cause of induced emf changing magnetic field so changing magnetic field opposed by direction of induced emf either you can write the first statement or the second one so what is the first statement the polarity of induced emf or the direction of induced emf is such that it tends to produce a current which opposes the changing magnetic flux that produced it who is the reason for induced emf changing magnetic flux after inducing this induced emf itself opposes the changing magnetic flux so that's why the faraday's second law is again corrected here that means we studied e equal to d pi by dt this is the faraday's second law here we are going to write negative sign e equal to minus d pi by dt this is from faraday's second law and lenz law after studying lenz law we modified this equation e equal to minus d pi by dt what why we have to write the negative sign negative sign indicates that induced emf opposes changing magnetic flux for n number of turns above equation can be written as e equal to minus n into d pi p divided by dt so this is all because of direction of induced emf right now this is very important lenz law is consequence of law of conservation of energy so this explanation carries three marks in your examination lenz law is consequence means lenz law follows the law of conservation of energy what is the statement of law of conservation of energy energy can neither be created nor be destroyed but one form of energy can be converted into another form that is law of conservation of energy here lenz law is also following the same statement whatever we studied till now just by changing magnetic flux we produced induced emf means we produced electric current is it possible to produce is it possible to create electric current electric current is electrical energy that means is it possible to create electrical energy no according to law of conservation of energy you can remember the statement energy can neither be created nor be destroyed we cannot create electrical energy here we studied till now we thought only because of the movement of the magnet we produced electrical energy in the coil but it was wrong we cannot produce electrical energy according to the statement of law of conservation of energy only we can convert one form of energy into another form so that we can prove here lenz law is a consequence of law of conservation of energy again the same setup i considered to understand this law of conservation of energy here the arrangement consists of a coil with a galvanometer and we considered a bar magnet we already know that when magnet is pushed towards or pulled away from the coil galvanometer shows a deflection that indicates electrical energy is generated in the coil so this energy is produced as the expense of 
mechanical energy according to law of conservation of energy. Observe here, I am going to consider when north pole of the magnet is pushed towards the coil, induced EMF takes place and it produces a north pole in the coil. North pole of the magnet, north pole of the coil. So, this opposes the motion of the magnet or movement of the magnet. Suppose, if that induced current develops south pole instead of north pole. What we studied initially, when north pole of the magnet is moving towards a coil, induced current takes place, that generates north pole. Suppose, let us imagine, instead of north pole, Suppose the coil generates a south pole, what will happen? South pole of the coil, north pole of the magnet, there is a force of attraction. Without any expense of your energy, directly both will attract each other because there is a force of attraction. But this is against law of conservation of energy because according to that law we know that only one form of energy can be converted into another form. So that's why it is against the law. It is not possible. When north pole of the magnet is moving towards the coil, again a north pole only generated in the coil, there is always a force of repulsion. When there is a force of repulsion, then we have to do certain extra work here. We are still pushing that magnet towards the coil. But remember there is a force of repulsion. But also we are moving the magnet towards the coil. There is some extra work has to be done to move the magnet. Work has to be done to move the magnet towards the coil. Extra work why we are doing because there is a force of repulsion. In that repulsive force also we are moving the magnet. Extra work has to be done. Right? So, it is moving means there is some mechanical energy. Mechanical energy means motion, motion of the object. So, here because of this extra work, that mechanical energy that is converted into electrical energy. Is it clear? Remember, when north pole of the magnet is moving towards a coil, it generates a north pole. North pole of the magnet, north pole of the coil, both are same pole. There is a force of repulsion. In that repulsive force, still we are doing extra work to move the magnet to produce electrical current. So that extra work has to be done. That is mechanical energy and that mechanical energy is converted into electrical energy so that Lenz law is the consequence of law of conservation of energy. Suppose if I am going to move the magnet away from the coil, when magnet is moving away from the coil, again induced EMF takes place, electric current is produced and it produces a south pole. We are taken that magnet away from the coil, electric current is produced, it generates a south pole. There is a force of attraction but what we are doing, we are taking that magnet away from the coil. There is a force of attraction, but we are taking that magnet away from the coil. Extra work has to be done. Again, that mechanical energy is converted into electrical energy. That indicates Lenz law is following law of conservation of energy. So, therefore, Lenz law is the consequence of law of conservation of energy. Whenever you get uh, the question regarding this law, Explain Lenz law is a consequence of law of conservation of energy. Just to draw this diagram and start to write the answer in your own words. Very interesting and you can write in your own words. This is very important. Right. So this is all about Lenz law and conservation of energy.